Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now this week we talk about a business that was born in a school through a childhood fascination. It all began in Kimberley in South Africa at the Christian Brothers College. Now this was where two twin brothers aged 12 from Kharangua became mesmerized by the sight of their first computer. Little did they know it was to make their fortune. Now many years on, Benjamin and Isaac Mopetlane have made millions with their ICT giant business connection that turns over about half a billion dollars a year. In the studio with me, I have Benjamin Mopetlane. So thank you very much for coming to the studio. So just take us back to that moment back in 1986 when you and your twin brother saw your first computer. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it was 1986, and if you recall those days, uh, <laughs> the computers uh, were BBC microcomputers, so that was our first computer we, we actually saw. And at school, there was a very strong computer society, and we're fascinated by computers. It was a day when, uh, if you worked on a word processor, you had to remember a lot of embedded commands. Uh, there was a lot of programming, uh, and I mean, the storage, and the computers were pretty slow as well. But uh, it was exciting. Uh, it was almost the beginning of innovation for us, uh, and really for us that we've always been fascinated by computers. And uh, so we got that. And fortunately, when we were at school, uh, the brothers were very encouraging. So, you know, they encouraged us to become part of the computer society. And do you remember the first thing you ever saw on a computer screen? Well, I remember uh, from what it is, it was all green. The la so these are green or white. And it took a long time to switch it on. So that was one of those challenges as well. And you and your, your brother, I know you were only 12 years old then, but did you think, well, maybe one day we could make money out of this? Or what did you think at the time? Uh, no, I didn't think that. I mean, I just, it was a fascination. It was a, a kid's fascination of seeing these two things. And my twin brother and I, we thought, wow, you know, this thing's possible. And more importantly, we thought, well, you could have fun with it. And at that stage, we used to spend a lot of time uh, after after hours uh, in the computer studio doing all sorts of programming. Uh, our first language of programming was BASIC, then we moved on to Pascal, and it was all exciting times. So, in a nutshell then, fast forward, when did you re-engage with the computer in your work when you grew up? Well, I mean, I went through uh, school with computers, then uh, I graduated from University of Pretoria, and that was uh, those days. But I mean, the next really, for us, the big event came when went through a software connection store in Pretoria. Uh, it was out in, in Pretoria Street uh, in those days. Walked in and uh, there were guys that were selling software. We knew exactly what they wanted. So the owner took a liking to us because we wanted to buy software which we wanted. And, when, and from there, uh, we knew exactly what was going on around it. And also during our vacation work at SAB Mela, uh, then we used to do a lot of work uh, on Lotus, which was kind of the main programming for spreadsheets. Uh, Today you got other ones, but that was a major one. So how long did you actually work for someone else before you went out on your own? Well, um, six months. Uh, so I spent six months at KPMG. Um, I had started to do become accounting, so I'm a graduate from the University of Pretoria. And what subsequently happened is that after six months, it's either I had a choice of uh, joining my brother who was already at Software Connection or wanting to become a chartered accountant. And all failed. I thought, well, if, if this doesn't succeed, I'll go back and, and do my articles and, and move on. So when was that moment then with yourself and your twin brother, Isaac, decided that you were going to set up your own thing? Well, I mean, I think it's important also to give context. You know, 1994 brought a lot of changes. Uh, so it, it brought a lot of optimism and hope to a lot of young black South Africans and aspiring uh, to get into business. So I think that was also living the moment as well. Uh, I think that obviously the the beginning of our new democracy, uh, the release of Mandiba and all that gave people a lot of more, I guess, hope and, and belief that something could happen. And when the advent of BEE came out, the Black Economic Empowerment, uh, the key thing was just to get the funding. And when it became clear that the Software Connection Group, uh, through the entrepreneurs, were willing to beg my twin brother and I and uh, some of the partners, uh, and the first seed capital we got was for four million rent. It wasn't a very hard decision, but a lot of my friends and otherwise tried to discourage us otherwise. Uh, my, but our parents have always had a self belief in us. So you, your friends were saying it's a bad idea. Why was that? Uh, well, they said, I mean, if you, at that stage, and even today, I mean, they were, at that stage, it was even worse in 1996. There were a few black chartered accountants. So if you're a black chartered accountant, you know, the potential to earn lots and lots of money was there. But I thought, well, I don't have a dog, I don't have a cat, I'm not married, uh, why not take the risk? And if all fails, 
I can always go back to uh, completing my articles. So in 1996, yeah. Business Connection was born. 1st of September 1996. <laughs> if you remember the date, oh, yeah. there speaks an entrepreneur. But it must have been quite difficult. I mean, even in those days, the yeah. internet was still, most people I knew, and I was, a, you know, I'm a journalist, yeah. and they hadn't used it. Well, I mean, I think it's important to look at in those years. Uh, yes, it was very difficult, uh, but I, I guess the hardest thing for any entrepreneur is about ability to raise capital. And when capital becomes available, I think you got you won't have the battle. But also, it's important from a computing world uh, point of view that at that particular time, Microsoft was what Apple or Google is today, or Facebook. Microsoft was the entrepreneurial company. They were encouraging people to. Uh, become partners and a lot of our, of our drive and success was because that Microsoft was successful. So to have them as a partner on board uh, in the beginning, uh, it was a new company. Uh, technology had been around, there had been other big companies like IBM and HP, but Microsoft was the new age. They were young, they were funky, they were sexy, and if you partnered with them, uh, you got to learn a lot of stuff, uh, which is interesting. So the timing for us couldn't have been better. But it does sound, I mean, for what you're saying, you got four million rand seed capital, was a heck of a lot of money uh, 16 years ago. Uh, but it does sound like, well, you know, you started up and it was easy, but there must have been some terrible times in the early days. Yeah, there were. I mean, you know, days when you just kind of waited for uh, one, of your, one of your clients to pay you so you can pay salaries, embarrassing moments where you have to tell the staff that, you know, you're going to get your salary on the 25th, you're going to get it on the 30th, and you better 31st. Oh, uh, dear. But, you know, uh, the key thing always is just to communicate, uh, even the, you know, the good times and the bad times, and really, uh, yeah, you just learn to, to soldier on and move on. But that's what people forget about entrepreneurs, isn't it? That you're the one who's carrying the can. Yeah. The, the buck stops with you and you've got to tell people the bad news. Uh, what other difficulties did you have as an entrepreneur? Well, I mean, you know, uh, you had to learn very quickly. Uh, that's, that's, that's number one. And secondly, you know, you end up doing a lot of things as well. But the, peak, the, big, the key moment for us, I always believe, is that, you know, it's always been about short-term sacrifice, long-term gain. So when we got our first uh, big deal uh, out of telecom, I remember it was 98, 99. It was over 100 million in over three years. And the first thing that came into our mind, we didn't think, well, we need to buy the fancy cars or the fancy that. The first thing that came into our mind is that we need to take that money and deploy it back. And we, we use that money to build the skills, to employ new skills as well. So that's important. Uh, the lessons learned, I guess, for us is that, uh, you know, hiring is important. So, you know, when you're an entrepreneur times, because you want things to get done, you spend uh, less time on hiring and vetting people and that. So at times we, we got it right, but other times we got it wrong. And when we did go it wrong, we, thought we got it horribly wrong. And no doubt about it, it impacted on ability to move forward as a business. Well, just get an idea of how, how you grew. I mean, obviously, 1996, it was you and your brother. Yeah. And virtually, uh, that was it. I mean, you employ something like 7,000 people now. Yeah. Uh, when did you, uh, how quickly did you grow? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that we became very quickly about is that, like any other business, there's a time when you're kind of thinking, well, this could be the end, or how long will I be able to, to move on? Uh, but I think the, the encouragement part for us was that uh, having a partner like Microsoft was crucial, uh, but the important part wasn't just about the Microsoft. We had a lot of support uh, for certainly a lot of people. Uh, one thing we we'll always remember is that we always dressed up in suits because I guess if you are 23 or 24 years old, then asking people to part with our corporate money and they see you all too casual, they never did. So we always knew presentation was a law, uh, being on time, all the good things that you need to do as an entrepreneur to win the man over. And once we got that, uh, we realized that Microsoft was a platform. And in, uh, in 2001, sorry, 99, in fact, after being with the Connection Group, they went through their own challenges and we became part of Jetronix, which was a multinational uh, at that stage that board went global, which was already in South Africa. So it gave us a lot of global exposure, uh, ability to manage the business on a quarterly basis. At that stage, we were a business close to about uh, 50 to 80 people. Then in 2001, I've been at a Microsoft conference and I met uh, one of the owners, an entrepreneur for that matter, a guy by the name of Matthew James Blewett, who had his own business, which was also Microsoft, but primarily focused around the coastal area. And at that time, we merged our businesses, then we grew, and at that stage, we were Microsoft's biggest partner with over 300 skills. 2003, 2004, we realized that we're never going to be, Microsoft wasn't going to be sustainable in the long term. And that's when we flipped our business into Complex to form a new business connection. Gave us 3,000 people. 
But I, I guess the key thing for an entrepreneur is that you know you need to know that in your head, to grow you need to let go at times. Okay, and talking about this entire journey has come along with your your twin brother. Um, yeah. I know in business you can always trust your own blood. I know there are twins in my family. I know twins are very close, yeah. but sometimes there can be clashes between you. How has it been with your twin brother all these years? Well, I mean, we come from a family of twins, so I've got three pairs of other twin cousins. <laughs> my mom is a twin. Uh, both uh, my late father had twin brothers, <laughs> two sets of twin brothers for that matter. And also uh, I've got twin uncles, one of my twin uncles still around. I guess, you know, we've seen, uh, yeah, it, it either goes either way, but we've seen the closeness of uh, either cousins or either uncles. So it helped a long way that naturally we're close. Uh, we share a lot of passion. Uh, you know, one of the passions was a sport, uh, specifically, you know, cricket, rugby, soccer. Uh, so that makes a big difference as well. But the key thing for us is that we're working to unlock value for ourselves and to make sure that, you know, we can maximize value for shareholders. So when we're in business, we're in a business mode. You know, we, we make decisions for the best interest of the business. That's important. And looking ahead um, for the business, there's a lot of competition now. I mean, it's yeah. certainly a lot more than 96. How are you dealing with that? Well, I mean, competition is a fact of life. You're never going to run away from it. Uh, I think one has to evolve. Uh, the industry has, has changed. Com you know, convergence is a key part. So our competition is no longer with the traditional IT players, but also with the telcos, uh, also venturing into that space. We have to compete against the multinationals, uh, either from America, which have been established in South Africa for a long time, and obviously the Indian phenomena with uh, Indian firms uh, setting food in South Africa. And just very briefly, we're running out of time now, but. Um, Basically, where do you think are the hotspots for your business in Africa? Well, for us, you know, the rest of the continent, uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, there, there's absolutely not that in our mind that Africa, this is Africa's moment. Uh, so Nigeria is very crucial. I think that you can never be on the continent without being in Nigeria. It's a very important market. Kenya is East Africa's largest economy. Uh, it's important to us. We believe that uh, West Africa with Ghana and also if one looks at Ethiopia, uh, those are also some of the exciting places around. And uh, last but not least, all the entrepreneurs watching out there, what would you say to them? Anybody who wants to follow your footsteps? Well, don't ever give up and always think about that it's you can make the impossible possible uh, for, for as long as you keep on dreaming. Because at times, you'll feel a little bit challenged and you feel like, you know what, it's time to start. But don't give up on your dreams. And it's not always easy, uh, but it takes an incredible amount of hard work and uh, perseverance. But don't give up. Thank you very much, Benjamin Mopatlani, the owner of Business Connection.